what part did drugs play in leading to the present circumstance in which you find yourself? And I think we can tell that part, and then we'll bring uh, 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 Leon Wilds, Mr. Wilds, out, and he will be here for the discussion of your immigration procedure. In the late '60s, there was a headhunting cop who was not very high up in the drug de department in London, which was pretty new anyway. They had two dogs for the whole department. And he went round and bust every pop star he could get his hands on, and he got famous. And some of the pop stars had dope in the house, and some of them didn't. It didn't matter to him. He planted it or did whatever. Later on, that's what he did to me, because at that time I didn't have any drugs. And uh, he what he planted yeah, something he in planted, your house. He, he planted, planted marijuana in your house. Yeah. Didn't now I, 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 or you I, say he did. Yeah, I mean, I say he did. I know. Well, I have to say that yeah, because okay. I wasn't there. Well, he's not going to get us. We're in the okay. well, I, He's in jail now, by the way, because he later got to be top dog, and uh, he had a big drug scandal thing going, like the one that was going over here, that the big investigation in the New York Police when I was first here, mm -hmm. the one the cervical thing. Well, we had a little one in England, which happened after I left, and he was caught in in Australia trying to escape and the English always run to Australia thinking they're going to vanish there so he was caught and I didn't think can't about vanish from Australia everybody knows it's down there yeah but they always have the illusion if you go to Australia you get away with it you know? sure and I I at the time didn't even think I was bust and to cut a long story uh, that, I, that he planted me to cut a long story short I just moved into an apartment and I'd had everything moved from another apartment it was all over the place I thought, well, maybe this is a bit of the hash that was left over. And I'd forgotten all about it. Possibly that was what happened, you know. And I just copped a plea, you know. He said, I won't get you for obstruction if you cop a plea. And I thought, oh, it's a hundred dollars or whatever, you know. It's no skin off mine. I was little thinking it would reverberate. And he said, oh, you know, I'll let your missus go, you know, because they never... In England at that time, the law was, if it was in this building, Mr. NBC would be caught for it. You know, he was responsible for it, even if he wasn't living there. That was the law then. I you mean, that if an law. officer of the law were to come in here, yeah. and they were to find an unlawful substance upon these premises, John, yeah. that the president of this television network would be liable to arrest if yeah. that law were in effect? That was an English law at the time that's been changed. <laughs> yeah. So you better put it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is... No, no. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't do that to old Tom. See that old no, bill there? Everybody knows got the writing know. right here on the paper. Now, we on. all know you're a nicotine addict. Anyway, the guy planted me, and it didn't dawn on me till later till I called a few friends who'd also been bust and said, did you have stuff? One of them said, yeah, I did have stuff. It was on the table. They didn't even notice it. They planted a whole pile in the bedroom. Uh -huh. You know, he had it out on the table some marijuana. So the, the guy was a, a rip-off and he's in jail and the, half that drug department's in jail too. But now, you but thought now, that all you'd yeah. have to do was pay the $100 yeah. fine, but then what happened? Well, I did just pay the fine, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, that was the end of it. And it went in the papers, Whoopi and another pop star bites the dust, you know. And then I, I came over to America and just, with no particular decision, decided that I'd like to live here, you know. I came over for a visit or something. And I, I was always coming and going, coming and going. And Yoko had been educated here and she was always going on to me about New York, you know. And she finally showed it me and walked me around. And I fell in love with it. And we thought, get an apartment instead of staying in a hotel all the time. Surely. So the next minute we thought, hey, well, let's stay, you know, isn't it great? So we, and we also had other complications going on. The show isn't long enough for it about her ex-husband running away with her daughter and there was court cases in Houston, the U.S., Houston, the U.S. Virgin Islands. And we had to keep applying for these visas. And after you bust, it's suggested that you don't apply for nine months. You know, and uh, people now have problems getting in. Mick Jagger, Stones, lots of musicians, Paul. Lots of people have, they have to sort of do a lot of ritual to get in before they can come and go. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we tried to say, look, we have this big case, we need to come in. And there was always a hassle and a hassle and a hassle, and then they started trying to throw me out. All right, so we're at the point now where it might be helpful to have Mr. Wilds, your attorney, present, just so that nothing is said that might prejudice Well, or... it's really in case you have a question that I can't answer. You know, they ask right. me what's happening with you, and I say, well, there's some paper went to some senator that's called, and I don't know who... All who's right, going. fine. You were told it might be a good idea to wait for nine months before applying for citizenship? Or no, no, this was um, after the bust in England, before applying to visit the United States, that it would be a cool idea. That's sort of, you know, it, it would be a cool idea. What is your status in the country right now? That's 
Why Leon here? What, what am I, Leon? Well, John was charged with being deportable in the United States for being an overstay by a very interesting um, uh, turn of events. The district director of the New York Immigration Service charged uh, him with being an overstay after he gave him a two-week extension of his time. And in the middle of that two-week period, he, he was here on visa, right? And he yes. overstayed. Is that, is that he, the position? He had originally come in as a visitor, and he had had a number of extensions. And then finally, the Immigration Service gave him a two-week extension. And right in the midst of that two-week final extension, they revoked the period that they had given him, and they declared that he had been here as an overstay for the week that he had been here with their authorization. And mm -hmm. that's the immigration service created the very status that they charged him with being deportable for. We fought that deportation case and a decision was finally rendered after about a year that he was in fact an overstay. Now the essential problem in the deportation case and what lies beneath the surface is that the only way one can get out of it is either to ask permission to leave this country voluntarily and get out which John was not prepared to do, or to apply for permanent resident status. And the law prescribes that any person who had ever been convicted of any offense, no matter how small, relating to the possession of marijuana, at any time in his lifetime and under any circumstances, cannot obtain residence. And so that what was happening when the government did this little routine of revoking his stay and charging him with being an overstay. They were putting him, locking him actually into a position where the only application he could make was one which they were pretty sure he could never succeed in. Which was? For, pardon? The application that he would make would be one that he would never permanent succeed residence. in. Permanent residence. Yeah. All right. Now we applied for permanent residence for John and for Yoko. We won Yoko's case and she was granted residence. But John's case was denied. We went up on appeal before the Board of Immigration Appeals, and we lost there as well. And we are now before the United States Circuit Court of Appeals on the same issue. And basically on that case, the issue resolves itself into whether or not what happened in England amounts to possession under our law, and whether what he possessed in England was actually marijuana under our law. You see, the substance which John was convicted of possessing, he pleaded guilty, was called cannabis resin. That's a generic term, and it includes a number of substances. We had one of our, the top experts in the United States, a psychiatrist at uh, Harvard Medical School, testify, and he, was the, he gave the only expert testimony. And his testimony was that cannabis resin is not marijuana, and marijuana is not cannabis resin. Yet the Immigration Service came to the conclusion that it was marijuana. And finally, with respect to the possession aspect, our law in the United States is very clear with respect to possession. You cannot be convicted in this country for possessing an illicit substance unless it is clear that you had a knowledge as to the illicit nature of the substance that you had. Mm -hmm. In England, at the time of John's conviction, a law existed which had been uniformly criticized throughout the world and which was later repealed. And it provided that the government did not have to prove that you knew the nature of the substance whatsoever. So that if you possessed a bottle and you thought it had aspirin in it, and in fact if the aspirin turned out to be some serious drug, you must have pleaded guilty under those circumstances because there was no way uh, out. And that actually was the legal situation that forced John into this, and that's where we stand with respect to the immigration.